Hello, I'm Molly Whitney, the Executive Director of the Cascade Forest Conservancy. We are a nonprofit based out of Portland, Oregon and Vancouver, Washington that works to protect and sustain forests, streams, wildlife and communities in the heart of the Cascades through conservation, education and advocacy. We've been around since 1985, formally as the Gifford Pinchot Task Force, and we're excited to be celebrating our 35th anniversary. We've grown a lot over the years and we now represent over 1200 members and supporters to trust us and advocate for to trust us and advocate for conserve and protect the Gifford Pinchot National Forest and surrounding areas. To do this, we implement diverse conservation strategies such as policy, collaboration, advocacy, and on the ground of research. This takes a variety of forms from beaver reintroduction, pre and post firework, aquatic habitat restoration, watchdogging federal and state policies, commenting on timber sales, and protecting the landscape set from threats such as a road across the pumice plain and an open pit mine like we'll be talking about today. To put the area that we'll be talking about in context, here's a map of the Gifford Pinchot National Forest. This forest is about 1.3 million acres and stretches from the Columbia River up to the base of Rainier and encompasses Mount Adams and Mount St. Helens. This area is quite unique and diverse. It contains pristine wilderness areas, ancient old growth forests, and many rural communities. Many people depend on the forest um, through tourism, recreation, and natural resource harvesting and gathering, like logging and huckleberry picking. Understanding this landscape helps to see why it's so important to stop a mine from being placed on the border of the Mount St. Helens Monument in the Green River Valley. Let me turn things over to Lucy Brookham, our policy manager, to tell you more about our No Place for a Mine campaign. Thanks, Molly. Hello, everyone. My name is Lucy Brookham, and I'm the policy manager for CFC. I'm going to talk to you about the beautiful Green River Valley, where the mine site is proposed, the potential consequences of this proposal, and the actions we've been taking as an organization to prevent this mine from going ahead. The pictured here is the Green River Valley, a lush habitat for wildlife. It's a thriving forest with the Green River running through, which is a river that is eligible for wild and scenic status due to its out outstanding aquatic and spawning habitat for salmon and steelhead. So pictured here is the proposed mine site in proximity to Mount St. Helens National Volcanic Monument. As you can see, Goat Mountain is located behind Spirit Lake in close proximity to Mount St. Helens. In fact, when the original monument boundary was proposed, these lands were all included into the monument boundary. They were removed because of the mineral rights in the area. An open pit mine would destroy 4,000 to 6,000 acres of this pristine habitat. As you can see from this photo, half this mountain would disappear and would be viewed from the surrounding areas for miles. Just the prospective drilling alone that has already been approved would have significant impacts on this place. This is supposed small scale prospecting actually impacts over 900 acres. Again, just looking at this photo here, you can see what kind of visual impacts that would have. And this proposal includes 63 drill holes over 23 sites, hardly a small affair. It would affect recreation, wildlife, and peaceful enjoyment of this area. That part about recreation and enjoyment is extremely important because a majority of the large portion of lands where the mine site is proposed were purchased by the Forest Service using funding from the Land and Water Conservation Fund, the LWCF. The LWCF is a really important tool for protecting public lands from threats like ours, like mining. So the lands were purchased to aid preservation of the scenic beauty in the area and the Green River before it enters the volcanic monument due to its really close proximity. So back in our case in 2014, a federal court invalidated previously granted drilling permits because the environmental analysis did not consider impacts to recreation at all, which is a requirement of the LWCF. As I mentioned, this is a highly recreated area. It's an incredible place for hiking, for horseback riding, for fishing in the Green River. There are hunting opportunities, especially elk. There's mountain biking, wildlife, and wildflowers all over in spring. And there's also berry picking. I've been lucky enough to hike the Green River mountain trails. And at the top of Goat Mountain, the panorama is absolutely breathtaking, with views of Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, Mount Adams, and the Green River Valley. So this trail up Goat Mountain, it winds round and looks directly over the proposed mine site. The visuals and sounds from drilling itself will completely destroy this experience and the experience of recreating the area completely. 
let alone the indefinite trail closures due to this drilling. Last time I was up on Goat Mountain in the fall, I ran into a gentleman hunting elk. Luckily, I was wearing orange. So the Green River Valley and the proposed mine site are abundant with wildlife due to the diverse landscapes created by the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. There are pockets of old growth that escape the blast that provide habitat for the northern spotted owl and other old growth dependent species. The northern spotted owl is officially recognized as threatened under the Endangered Species Act and it is critical to protect its habitat from intrusive and invasive activities like mining, exactly like the mine that is proposed right now. Elk, bears, mountain goats and other species utilize forest openings in the area created by the eruption. The surrounding area is historically one of the largest elk herds in Washington state and loud and continuous thumping from drilling activities alone are likely to disperse elk from the area, potentially indefinitely. And as I mentioned before, the, the nearby Green River is eligible for wild and scenic river designation. It flows into and benefits fish populations in the Tootle and Cowlitz rivers and is also designated as a wild steel head gene bank by the state of Washington. So not only is wildlife going to be impacted by this mine, surrounding communities could see immediate impacts to drinking water. This map shows potentially affected drinking water. All communities along the Green River are highly likely to be affected, as well as those along the Cowlitz and the Tudor River. It is even possible for impacts to travel all the way down to the Columbia. If you just look at this map, the potential impacts from, from this mine are, are long ranging. So this is what a Harbrook mine could look like in this pristine landscape of the Green River Valley, permanently altering the, the impressive panorama at the top of Goat Mountain and forever changing the landscape and wildlife that depend on this ecosystem. Imagine a view like this in the surrounding area, being able to see it from Goat Mountain, from Mount St. Helens. So what does an open rock mine do to the landscape? Acid mine drainage and increased copper levels occur when surface rock is exposed to acid and rain. This is highly toxic for fish. And remember, this is, this is an area and, and rivers that are just abundant in salmon and steelhead. So mine waste needs to be stored on, on, on site in tailing pools or piles and tailing dams can be breached sending toxic waste into downstream communities. This may potentially poison drinking water for downstream communities. And we've just looked at that map and shown how many communities could be affected by this. What water treatment may be required beyond the life of the mine and companies often abandon site and leave communities responsible for that costly cleanup. It could take decades, if not never returning this landscape and these rivers back to their, their state before this happens. And although a mine might seem like a boost for the local economy or an opportunity for jobs, Recreation brings large percentage, percentages of jobs and revenue to East Lewis County and the towns closest to Goat Mountain and the Green River Access. In fact, recreation on public land in the county provides 2,400 jobs and brings 253 million to the local economy every year. And over half of that is supported by East Lewis County alone. So Cascade Forest Conservancy has been working to prevent hard rock mining in the Gifford Pinto National Forest since 2005, when a mining company, General Molly, first submitted an application for a hard rock mining permit. We formed a coalition, we commented, and we objected to the permits. And in the spring of 2008, the Bureau of Land Management denied the mining lease application for General Molly. In 2010, these mineral rights were sold to a Canadian company, Ascot Resources. Ascot was then allowed to start drilling without an environmental assessment. Cascade Forest Conservancy and others objected and Ascot halted the drilling operations. New, new prospecting permits were issued by the Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management and we sued and a, a judge declared that the issue, permit, the issue permits were illegal in 2014, but this was not the end. The permits were then issued again in 2018 and CFC filed a complaint in March and filed briefs in October in the District Court of Oregon. We're now waiting for a ruling or a date for oral arguments. It's been a long wait, but it's definitely been affected by COVID. We've been in this fight for over 15 years. And while litigation is an excellent avenue for temporary protections, we are working towards a solution that permanently protects the Green River Valley. Over to you, Molly. Thanks, Lucy. It's clear to see how a mine on this landscape would be extremely detrimental and potentially dangerous. We need your help to make sure that this mine never comes to fruition. 
you can help us by taking action and getting involved. To stay up to date on our efforts, the case, and next steps, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, at Cascade Forest. Also, our efforts and work wouldn't happen without support from dedicated individuals like you. Please donate to support CFC and to protect the Green River Valley. In fact, we have an exciting opportunity for our viewers today. We have this hoodie, which has our Mount St. Helens No Place for a Mine slogan on the back and the Cascade Forest Conservancy logo on the front for those supporters who sign up for a sustaining membership of $20 a month. Please join us and help us stop this mine and support all of our programs. Also, changes occur when people like you speak out. Please, especially if you're a Washington resident, contact your senators and representatives to let them know that you're against this mine and any exploratory drilling. For, in, for more information on how to get involved or to get one of these hoodies, email us at info at cascadeforest.org. Thank you and stick around for some question and answers. <laughs>